This presentation will deal about the classification of parasites on the basis of the relationships and naming of parasites in accordance with the standardized nomenclature of parasitic diseases or SNOPAD. For the outline, the first part of the presentation will talk about the introduction to SNOPAD. We will also define nomenclature and we are going to discuss taxonomic hierarchy and the guidelines and principles of SNOPAD. Consistency in the use of terminology is an important requirement for clear communication in any field of science. In contrast to the basically homogeneous terminology of bacterial and fungal diseases, in the nomenclature of parasitic diseases or infections, Different names are being used with varying frequency for denoting the same disease entity, such as trypanosomosis and trypanosomiasis, pasiolosis and pasoliasis, and others. The existing usage of inconsistent disease terminology induced the World Association for the Advancement of Veterinary Parasitology or WAABP to initiate codification of simple rules of formation of names to denote parasitic infections. This, was, or this guideline was published in 1988 as the standardized nomenclature of animal parasitic diseases or the SNOA-PAD or the SNOAPAD. The standardized a nomenclature of animal parasitic diseases is meant as a guideline for general use to improve the clarity of scientific communication. It should be especially useful in promoting effective usage of computerized data retrieval services. Though the SNOAPAD initiatives were originally meant for those working in veterinary parasitology, the proposal was found sensible and endorsed in 1990 by the World Federation of Parasitologists for adoption for all parasitic infections. Therefore, the reference to animal was dropped, thereby changing the acronym to SNOAPAD. An overview of the SNOPAD history and a study on the impact of the use of different disease names as database search terms on the yields of data are presented in two recent publications of CASAI in 2006 published in Veterinary Parasitology Journal. Before we are going to discuss the guidelines and the principles of SNOPAD, let us first define what is nomenclature. Nomenclature is the process of naming the parasites. Members belonging to the animal kingdom are classified into phyla, class or classes, orders, families, genus, and species. Later, Additional categories such as super or sub were created to accommodate the increasing number of species discovered over the years. Super or sub was prefixed to the existing categories. For example, we have the superfamily and the suborder. So the superfamily is above the family and the order, or the suborder rather, is under the taxa or the taxon order. The family group includes taxa ranked as, or the family group rather, includes taxa ranked at the family and the tribe levels, including super. We have the super and the subfamilies. The genus group includes taxa below subtribe and above species. The species group includes taxa ranked as 
species or subspecies. Bold text indicates a level from the original Linnaean taxonomic hierarchy developed by Carolus Linnaeus in the year 1758. So the one in bold letters are from the taxonomic hierarchy by Linnaeus. So this includes the king, a domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So as you can notice here, you know, because of the discovery of additional uh, parasites along the years, so there is a development of additional uh, taxa level. Now, for example, for the uh, phylum, we have here the subphylum. For the class, we have the superclass and the subclass. For the order, we have the superorder and the suborder. Family, we have the superfamily and the subfamily. For the genus, we have the subgenus, and for the species, we have the subspecies. So, according to the SNOPAD, the names of the parasites must be from Latin or Greek and not in the local language. The genus name should be a noun, and the species name should be either a noun or an adjective. The name of the order ends in IDA or IDA. For example, we have the Strongylida. The name of the superfamily ends in OIDEA. For example, Ancylostomatoidea. The name of the family ends in IDAE. For example, Ancylostomatidae. And the name of the family or the subfamily ends in INAE. For example, Ancylostomatinae. The first letter of the genus should always be in capital letter, while the first letter of the species should be in small letter, excepting for those whose names have been derived from persons where it shall be in either in small or in capital letter. For example, we have here you now the Trypanosoma evansi. It can also be written in this uh, form. Trypanosoma evansi, both uh, the, the genus is the uh, Trypanosoma and the evansi refers to the species. So because the evansi here is derived from a name of a person, so that the first letter of the word is Capitalized. So the Trypanosoma evansi was considered to be the first pathogenic trypanosome to be discovered by Dr. Griffith Evans. Um, Dr. Griffith Evans discovered the organism in the year 1880 in the blood of horses and camels in India that were suffering from a disease called Sura. So this was Dr. Griffith Evans, who showed that repanosomes were key to the disease Sura. Another uh, guideline is that in printed formats, the names of the genus and the species should be italicized. While in written text, the names of the genus and the species should be underlined. We also have the law of priority. So the law giving importance to the scientist who first named the parasite is known as the law of priority. If the genus and the species names are after the scientist, the name of the scientist and the year should follow the scientific name. For example, we have here uh, Cystosoma nasale, Rao, 1933. It can also be written, or it has also been written, 
in published research as the Susoma Nasali Rao, 1933. If the name of the original author is changed subsequently for valid reasons, his name and the year must be written within brackets after the newly classified name, for example, Ansylostoma caninum, Herculani, 1859, or rather, Ansylostoma caninum, uh, parenthesis, Herculani, comma, 1859, close parenthesis. We also have here you know, the other scientists that, uh, that, that uh, involved you know, in the discovery of the parasite. We have Hall, comma, 1913. So the Herculani and the Hall refers to the, 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 the person that are involved in the discovery of this particular parasite. If a parasite name is changed subsequently for, for valid reasons, the earlier name is considered as the synonym. For example, Neoascaris vitolorum is the synonym for Toxocara vitolorum. So the former name of the nematode parasite Toxocara vitolorum is Neoascaris vitolorum. And Neoascaris vitolorum is a synonym of Toxocara vitolorum. Let's now proceed to the principles of SNOPAD. Again, the SNOPAD refers to, or it is an acronym for, the standardized nomenclature of parasitic diseases. So the slides to follow will show the brief summary of the principles of SNOPAD as seen in the website of the World Association for the Advancement of Veterinary Parasitology. When disease names are formed from the taxonomic name of the parasite of the suffixes asses or EASIS, use for describing a disease or infection should be discontinued. Only the suffix OSIS, in plural, O-S-E-S, should be used. So previously, we have included this in our lecture, you know, the use of the suffixes ASIS and EASIS to denote the apparent clinical signs and the subclinical infections in animals. So according to SNOPAD, you know, this should, should be uh, discontinued and recommended to use instead the suffix osis to uh, as a nomenclature for disease names. Another major source of nomenclature, uh, nomenclatural heterogeneity originates from the variation in the stem of words which are formed either from the nominative example trypanosomosis hypodermosis or from the Greek genitive trypanosomatosis hypodermatosis. For uniform usage, SNOPAD offers a simple solution by proposing that the suffix osis to be added to the stem of the name of the parasite taxon, which in general is formed from the nominative case of the taxa by the omission of the last one or two letters. For example, for the taxa trypanosoma, so they proposed to name the disease that this parasite causes to trypanosomosis. For the sarcosystis, sarcosis theosis. And for the fasciola, fasciolosis. So when we say uh, trypanosomosis, you know, that is the name of the several diseases and vertebrates caused by parasitic protozoan trypanosomes of the genus trypanosoma. So when we say sarcosystiosis, that is a parasitic zoonotic disease commonly observed in domestic animals such as buffaloes, cattle, and pigs. When we say fasciolosis, that is a parasitic worm infection, caused by the common liver fluke, fasciola hepatica, and fasciola gigantica. We also have the trichostrongylidae. 
So this is uh, formally known as trichostrongylidiasis. So this is, uh, Snowpile proposed it to be, or recommended it to be, trichostrongylidosis. So when we say trichostrongylidosis, that is a parasitic disease caused by the nematode parasite of the genus Trichostrongylus. We also have the as, uh, Ascaris. It is also known as the Ascariasis. So Snowpad recommended it to be Ascariosis. When we say ascariosis, it refers to the infestation of the swine by the roundworm, ascarisuum, which can cause pneumonia, hepatitis, and ill treat. We also have the trichinella, so it is also known as the trichinelliasis. The snowpad recommended it to be trichinellosis or trichinosis. When we say uh, this uh, par particular disease is a disease that people can get by eating raw or undercooked meat from animals infected with the microscopic parasite trichinella. You also have the hypoderma, so it is also known as the hypodermiasis. So it is now uh, recommended to be named as hypodermosis. So when we say hypodermosis, that is the economically important disease in cattle caused by the warble flies, hypoderma bobis, and hypoderma lineatum. So when the taxa end with X in the nominative, the stem is formed from the genitive and the disease name is derived from the stem of the genitive. For example, if you hear the indolimax, so in the, when we say uh, indolimax, it refers to the, uh, the genus you know, of the parasite. Uh, for example, we have the indolimax nana that is considered to be the smallest of the anthocyanin dwelling amoebae that affects humans. So that is the nominative term for the parasite or the, the, the taxa name of the parasite. Its genitive uh, term is indolimacus and the the, the, the disease name of the parasite would be derived from its genitive name. So this would be uh, termed now as the endolimacosis. We also have the pulex. So its uh, genitive term is polycos and the disease name is polycosis. In some cases, the disease name is formed by adding the suffix osis to the full name of the parasite taxon. For example, the full name of the parasite taxon is hepatozoonosis, so it would become hepat. Rather, the full name of the parasite taxon is hepatozoon, it would become hepatozoonosis by adding the suffix osis. We also have the multiceps, so it would become multicepsosis. Loa, loa, loa osis, dermacentor, dermacentorosis. We also have the argus, so it would, it would become arg argasosis, and the acaripis, acaripisosis. Well established vernacular disease names, not coin from the taxonomic name of the parasite can also be used as alternatives to the related terms offered by SNOPAD. For example, we have here you know, some vernacular disease names, sleeping sickness, Chagas disease, Nagana, malaria, East Coast fever, hydatidosis, cysticercosis, visceral larva migrants, mange, scabies, miasis, and others. So these are vernacular disease names that can also be used as alternatives to the related terms offered by SNOPAN. So defining some of these uh, common terms, we have mange. So when we say mange, that is a type of skin disease caused by parasitic mites. We also have here miasis. It is the infection of a fly larva or maggot in human tissue. And of course, we have here malaria. 
So malaria is a life-threatening disease caused by parasites that are transmitted to people through the bites of infected female Anopheles mosquitoes. Disease names can also be formed by using formulas such as infection with, infection due to, or infection caused by, to which the name of the causative agent is added. For example, infection caused by Echinococcus granulosus. <laughs>